With the recent launch of the AMD RX 5600 XT, we can be pretty confident that this generation is essentially GPU complete. So with that in mind, what's the best graphics card of this current generation? That's 2080 Ti, obviously. Well, yeah, that is objectively the most powerful, but it still really depends on your definition of best. Is it really just the straight fastest gaming GPU, or is it the graphics card which over delivers on performance and undercuts on price? There is, of course, the oft-rumoured, now-confirmed Big Navi graphics card that Dr. Lee Sasura self has assured us is on the way to our PCs this year. But whether we can really say that's going to count as part of this generation is debatable. Yeah, especially if it does indeed use the Navi 21 GPU and the RDNA 2.0 architecture. That all kind of feels next-gen to us. We've already got quite enough to get through because after a long wait, the two graphics card giants are really going at each other in terms of product releases. And in fact, there have been 17 different cards launched in this generation alone and a hell of a lot of them have been jammed into the same relatively small price bracket. They've essentially been launched on top of each other, which makes it incredibly hard to know where one card stacks up against the others. That's exactly why we're here to make it simple, ranking each of this gen's GPUs. Okay, we're not gonna make it that simple because while we are going to give you the lowdown on pure performance, uh, we are also gonna take a performance per dollar measure too. And to do all this, we're using the industry standard 3 Mark Time Spy GPU benchmark to give us a comparative performance score, and we'll then use that score to give us a value metric based on... Not in-game frame rates then? No, not frame rates. We're going to score based on marks, 3D marks. So, marks per dollar then. Sounds a bit weird, but I'm on board. Let's do it. What can we say about the RTX 2080 Ti? It's the most powerful consumer graphics card around, packing a huge amount of NVIDIA Turing Silicon into a huge 754mm squared GPU. As such, it tops the charts as the card with the highest 3D Mark Time Spy score, well ahead of the RTX 2080 Super and a long way in front of anything that AMD has to offer, for now at least. The value proposition, however, is a lot tougher to pass. Actually, it's impossible. If you ever find yourself questioning how much you spend on a pair of socks, the RTX 2080 Ti just isn't for you. When Nvidia decided to go all super with the 2080, it gave us the full fat TU-104 GPU, delivering all the silicon, all the transistors and all the performance that the second tier Turing GPU could offer and all for the exact same price as the slower RTX 2080, which inevitably was retired with immediate effect. From a price performance point of view, again it's a tougher ask, especially considering the RTX 2070 Super is itself getting mighty close to the RTX 2080 Super's performance. But if you want the most real-time ray tracing potential from your next graphics card purchase and can't conceive of dropping $1,000 on a GPU, this is the best graphics card for the next-gen gaming tech. Like the 2080 Super, the RTX 2070 Super retired the original version of Turing's third tier graphics card, but unlike the 2080 Super, it uses a whole new level of GPU to do so, and that makes it an entirely more compelling graphics card offering than its erstwhile sibling. It's more of an RTX 2080 Lite than a 2070, as it sports the TU-104 GPU rather than the TU-106 Silicon. This was the first of NVIDIA's recent graphics card revisions that felt like a genuine reaction to the new AMD Navi generation of GPUs and showed just how valuable increased GPU competition is for the consumer. It means we get better value from our cards. The RX 5700 XT is AMD's first entry in the performance leaderboard and the first new high-end AMD GPU of the Navi generation. It also marks an impressive debut for the new Radeon RDNA architecture. It might have needed a pretty severe price cut ahead of its release to compete with the new RTX 2070 Supercard, but it did kickstart AMD's new approach of faking out the media and its rivals pre-launch. The reference design is also one of the best looking Radeon cards I've seen in years, with that little dent adding some flair to the shroud. Unfortunately that design flair doesn't stop it from being rather hot and loud. The AMD RX 5700 isn't just one of our favourite graphics cards of its generation, it's one of our favourite graphics cards, full stop, but almost in spite of what AMD had created, not because of it. The standard gaming performance of the RX 5700 is pretty impressive, but it didn't have as great a price cut as the XT and couldn't perform near the same level either, but only because of the artificial limits AMD put in place, which can easily be circumvented. And we haven't taken the unlocking and overclocking potential into account with the rankings, and it still comes high in both performance and value. The ranking of 8 and 6, this is one of the best performing, best value cards around today. The disparity between the RX 5600 XT's overall GPU ranking and its price performance rank speaks volumes about where this new Navi-based Radeon has been positioned. The graphics card that AMD has parachuted into the market to sit between the RX 5700 and the RX 5500 GPUs, as a space previously occupied by no less than four different NVIDIA graphics cards. Originally spec to go head-to-head -head with the GTX 1660 Ti, a pricing change from NVIDIA on the aging RTX 2060 meant AMD either had to drop their own price or bump up the specs. It chose to do the latter and has made the RX 5600 XT arguably the best value GPU on the market today, though not necessarily by our own 3D Mark value metric. 
1660 Ti is a card that's become ever more resolutely meh the longer it's been out in the wild. The launch it was blighted by overpriced, factory overclocked SKUs, and now it's been effectively retired by the GTX 1660 Super. And that was even before Nvidia dropped the price of the RTX 2060. The GTX 1660 Super is a cheaper card with a similar GPU and only a little behind in gamer performance too. And until the RX 5600 XT dropped, the Super was our go-to GPU recommendation. The TI though is in the lower middle order in terms of performance and pretty low down on the stack when it comes to value as well. So yeah, nah. The 8GB version of the RX 5500 XT hits the same sorts of performance notes as the 4GB card, but features far lower down the order when it comes to value. Those extra 4GB of GDDR6 memory really weigh it down in terms of cost. In reality though, the overall frame rate difference is negligible between the two options, but we'd always lean towards the 8GB card as a preference. Honestly, with all the competition around this exact price point though, we probably wouldn't be recommending either of the 5500 series cards. When you're locking around the $200 mark, it's tough to look past the value offering of the GTX 1660. Sitting right down at the bottom of the performance ladder, the 1650 Super is often overlooked, but it's objectively the best value graphics card of this generation. It's rocking the same TU116 GPU as the GTX 1660 cards and uses GDDR6 too, making it a far superior card to the standard GTX 1650 and not far off the same price. 1650 Super delivers almost RX 5500 XT level gaming performance for a little less cash, and that's what puts it top of the charts in terms of our straight points to dollar metric, but there's a Polaris shaped problem for this card. The $100 ish RX 570 is almost impossible to beat from a pure value perspective, but that's last, last generation tech, and we'd probably now recommend the Nvidia GPU ahead of it for the little extra it costs. So there it is, the best graphics card in terms of sheer performance is the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. And the best value GPU is the GTX 1650 Super. Clean sweep for the green team then. Well, kinda, but realistically, if we were to be giving you a straight graphics card recommendation, balancing both price and performance, it's actually a toss up between either the RX 5700 or RX 5600 XT. Yeah, those two cards offer great gaming performance for a rather decent price. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the sounds that have come out from the holes below our noses. And if you did, give us a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and all that YouTube jazz. Yeah. Until next time, adio.